Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. We recently had the chance to talk with Professor Anthony Covarrubias from UCLA, who has been involved in research related to aging, especially NAD and senescent cells. He was an author on a couple of recent papers on the subjects. To provide some background to the interview, we would like to talk through two of the key papers, and this is the second of those. The paper is NAD plus metabolism and its role in cellular processing during aging. The paper goes into a lot of depth on this topic and here I'm going to pick what I believe are the key points for people who want to optimize their health span and not go into all the details. The paper itself is publicly available and linked to in the description. We do into more depth in the interview. NAD is a coenzyme for redox reactions making it central to energy metabolism. Redox is short for reduction and oxidation. This is required, for example, for the processing of glucose in our cells to produce energy. These reactions change NAD to NADH and back, but do not consume the NAD supply, so we will not talk about them more in this video. If NAD is low, however, it may affect these reactions. There is another set of reactions in which NAD is used, which are not redox, in which NAD is consumed, we will talk about these later. NAD is a molecule which is involved in many of the functions of the cell which are critical for maintaining the correct internal environment and healthy aging. Our NAD levels decrease with age. If this is true, either less is being made or more is being consumed. Which of these it is and why is what we need to discover. The decrease is linked to many of the diseases of aging. Replenishing the NAD levels has been shown to reverse some of these diseases. So targeting NAD metabolism has emerged as a therapeutic approach. However, as they say, we still have a lot to learn. First, a little background on how NAD is made. Here are the main pathways. Number one is when it's made from tryptophan, an amino acid. This does not seem to be a large source of NAD and the genes which enable this pathway are mostly expressed in the liver. Number two is the price handler pathway, which takes nicotinic acid, NA in this diagram, from our diet and creates NAD. And number three is where nicotinamide, or NAM, one of the products of NAD processing, is returned to NAD via NMN. Of these, this last pathway, the salvage pathway, appears to be the most important in terms of NAD created. I have not shown other pathways that come from dietary supplements such as NR and NMN in this diagram. So that is how NAD is made. How is it consumed? As we mentioned earlier, there are a number of enzymes which consume NAD, normally creating nicotinamide or NAM as an end product. You may recall that NAM can be converted back to NAD through the salvage pathway. The key enzymes in the cells are sirtuins, which are involved with the epigenic markers, and PARPs, which are involved in DNA repair. Within the cells, these account for up to 60% of the NAD consumed. And then CD38, CD157 and SARM1 which are involved in the immune system. CD38 also seems to be the enzyme whose expression increases most with age. As a final note, CD38 will work on NMN and CD157 will work on NR, converting both of these to nicotinamide, so degrading the supplements before they have a chance to be converted to NAD. Although originally it was believed that NAD reduction was due to increased PARP activity due to greater DNA stress. As discussed in our previous video, it is now believed that CD38 consumes more NAD as we age. What are the effects that we see with NAD and aging? First is inflammaging, where an accumulation of senescent cells secretes SASP, a pro-inflammatory mix that both creates more senescent cells and drives macrophages into the pro-inflammatory M1 state where they express CD38 and consume more NAD. Secondly is axonal degeneration, which is a precursor to many age-related neuronal disorders and is characterized by a rapid decline in NAD. This seems to be because if the axone is not getting replacement NAD from the tissue and further consumption by SARM1. Thirdly is reduced autophagy. Autophagy allows cells to adapt to variable nutrient availability and cleans up defective components in the cells. Autophagy is regulated downstream of NAD levels by CERT1, so reduced levels of NAD lead to reduced autophagy and an accumulation of dysfunctional proteins and mitochondria in the cell. 
NAD is a cofactor in many reactions in the cell. For example, it is required by CERT1 in histone modifications. Downregulation of this leads to DNA being incorrectly packaged. It also affects the key genes associated with the timing of the circadian clock. And finally, DNA repair is impacted as this is executed by part 1 and the sirtuins, both of which require NAD. This leads to genetic instability and either cell death via apoptosis or the cell becoming senescent. As mentioned in the abstract, rebuilding NAD levels seems to reverse some of these effects of aging. What can we do to rebuild our NAD levels? Having a healthy diet, low in processed foods and calorie restriction raise NAD levels, as does exercise. We can take NAD precursors such as NR or NMN and also target the NAD consuming enzymes either with molecules such as the pigeonin or quercetin or by reducing our inflammation and senescent cells and finally by keeping to a regular circadian rhythm. In this video we only had time for a brief overview. We go into these topics in more depth with Professor Covarubias. Please do watch the interview which we will release shortly. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.